No matter what we say, we will push back by a man who is supposed to stand with us to help us. Amen. The court. This is up as it gets. Make it clear we did not agree to this. We were misled. Those terms that Judge Thomas Rogers laid out in the court today was never discussed to us. Because if it was, there would have been the end of a discussion. There was an explanation, and it was an incomplete explanation. Because what was told up there, six months suspended jail time, community service, court fines. That was never discussed. So whichever way they want to twist the narrative, like they've always done since they killed Ronnie, May 10, 2019, they've always taken control of the narrative to where Corey Ark gets to retire all his 20 years. He, he has all the accolades of a bad killer cop, right. but he gets swept under the rug. That part you'll never know because of how this case ended. All made clear by those that we saw in the courtroom. It was meticulously handled, and you know what to expect with Chris Harper. Chris Harper will be told is coming up in February 2025. You can't expect the same to happen with Chris Harper. Because what charges are left? And what are they going to do with that? A written execution. There you go. It was. They've been rewarded. Yeah. They've been rewarded. Corey York has given 82000 a year. That's his pension retirement and more to that. Yeah. That's right. They reward their killer cops. These persons they call bad apples that I, without hesitation, killer cops, K-K-K-I-L-L-E-R, K-K-K-O-P-S. Right. In the damn state of Louisiana. Look at what they did to my son. And then they said they did all they could to resuscitate him. All this is props. They never did this to Ronnie. Ronnie was killed on that street. On the scene. Ronnie was killed on the street. So the fact that we were told Ronnie died in a car accident, no. you got to no. bring all that up. No. They glazed over everything. No matter what we do, no matter how hard we fight, because Ronnie's not the first. There's many more that goes unanswered. There's many more killer cops on the street. And then he got promoted to work in another division, another state. Right. And that's where our reporters here, they want to expose the archive. Do your work. Right. Let's keep moving. Let's yeah. get this. What they say? Put the talk to work. Yeah. Put the damn talk to work. Collectively, we can move this. And we have a lot of sound, strong people here. Not to mention the fact that as we connect what's happening in the outside states, there's a lot of angry people. There's a lot of more answers that we need to find for all the other victims of police. Not to mention police brutality and... Yes, the unfairness that goes on across the board on so many different levels. So let's stay focused. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Good evening. Good afternoon. I'm sorry. I don't even know what time of day it is. Yes, good morning. I've been in a phase, uh, in a glaze for five and a half years. Okay? And I'm just taken back for a district attorney who can act like he's standing for the people. No preaching. No. Shame. Belton did absolutely nothing for us. Preacher? Preacher. Say his name. Ronnie. 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 No. Say, no. say John Belton's name. Oh. John, Belton. John F. Belton. John F. Belton. We know what the F stands for. Because mm -hmm. we don't give up about him. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because he's definitely not like us. Straight up. How can we get felony charges and dumb them down to misdemeanor charges? Right. Simple battery. Simple battery. We get more time shoplifting in the Walmart. That's right, yes. that's yes. right. Okay? You get a thousand dollar fine. For killing! For killing the murder of 
Rama Green, Kill you her. get to pay a thousand dollar get out of jail card. Mm. Uh, I'm lost for words. I'm telling you right now. If, well, I'm not. if I didn't look, I love the Lord, okay? And I just want to cuss all up and down this block, okay? Because they got it all messed up. But what they did not know is when they lied about him dying from a car accident, that there was a house on the corner with them eight little cameras who caught everything on film, okay? God is not mocked. He said, whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap, okay? So I'm telling you, for this cat who's running free, he don't get nine lives. Because there's a day called Judgment Day, okay? And he will see our maker, okay? And I promise you, he will not say job well done. Oh, yeah. He will not say job well done. They think they got away with something today. But let me tell you something. God sits high and he looked low, okay? And he sees everything. He knew the plot of the enemy, okay? But he said, go see my son Job, a.k.a. Ronald Green, yeah. okay? Ronald, his death was not in vain, That's right. okay? Because we know he has no more worries. Yeah. He has no more cares of this world. Yeah. He doesn't have to live in this dark place that we call life, okay? Because we got these cats sitting on every corner thinking that they going to watch us. No, they're being watched. That's right. Okay? <laughs> Trust and believe they are being watched. That's right. Okay? And every killing and every, all the blood, all the bones, all the cemeteries that they're dead, they're hiding our dead bodies. They're gonna have to pay for it. Yeah. They're gonna have to pay for it. Belton too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Belton's already on the stage. Yes. You can believe that. And he ain't got no holes in his hands. Okay? Belton. I can't even call him DA. Dumbass. I, yes, I can call him a dumbass. Dumbass John F. Belton. Because he did nothing for the people. We had a meeting. I asked him, can you tell me what you've done to fight for Ronald Green? And I'm still waiting for this answer today. Never had an answer. But you want to come in court, you want to wave, because me and your wife got the same name. Yeah. I'm sitting on the right side of Alana. I don't know what she's doing. Hmm. But I can't hide in the bed this criminal because all the blood that's on their hands is also on his hands. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's, that's right. right. He should have recruit, rec, rec, what, reclused himself yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. I would rather them do it to us than him do it to us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You got a story every time I see you, your dad done what with Martin Luther King. He turned over his grave today. Yeah. That's right. He flip flopping doing cartwheels and all of that because he's ashamed. Yeah, come on. That's right. That's right. I don't even want to see him in the next case. He can kick rocks. Yeah. Yeah. He can beat his feet. Yeah. He ain't doing nothing for the people. Mm -hmm. I'm angry. I am the sister of Ronald Green, and this family will never be the same. Do you hear me? We will never be the same. Yeah. 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 How can you kill a man that's pleading for his life and saying, I am your brother? He is every one of your brother. And for all the kids that are alive today, I feel sorry. I feel sorry for your mother. I hope she don't end up like mine. Yeah, yeah, amen. Because I can't even tell you, my mom, her mental, okay, yeah. her psychic, her daily walk will never be the same. So I want to thank all of you for coming out today to, to be a part of history. Yeah. Because even though we didn't get what we needed, we ain't giving up. We ain't giving up. We're not turning our back. We're going to continue to fight for the people here. Yes. All right? And it's yes. not just here. This is happening around the world. Yeah. So we need you all to stand. You know how many mothers out here that lost their son? Can I get you to just uh, lift your hands? If they killed your mother, if they killed your brother, if they killed your son, your daughter, just lift up your hands. Shame. Shame. Driving while black is a thing, people. And they're going to do it. Driving while black. That's all my 
brother did. The last I checked, it wasn't a crime. It's not. Not on the book. This was racist. White right. supremacy. All right. This was a hate crime. That's right. If you didn't know, this was a hate crime. Absolutely. That's right. They hate us because we're kings and queens. That's right. All right. Talk about that. They hate us because we got something that they could never have. All right. Tell them what State Trooper F is, is okay. always bragging about. When they get ready to go on, on, on duty at night, what do they say? Is this going to be a nigga night? Yeah. When they go out, Trooper. State Trooper F. And I'm sure all the other State Troopers, yeah. they go out, they call it nigga night. This is going to be nigga night. They test each other's on their phone and they let you know this is nigga night. All right? They find someone, they pull them over, act like they did something. They even pull them. Eric Bowman over in front of his, his, his yard, right in front of his driveway. Didn't know the cameras was rolling. Mm -hmm. Two weeks after Ronald. Two weeks after Ronald was killed. Wow. Two weeks. And they, didn't and they got off. They got off. Yeah. Wow. They got off. Modern day lynching is real, people. So I yield, but I want to thank you all for coming out and supporting the Ronald Green family. Yeah. All right, this fight is not just for us, it's for you too. Right. Say his name. Ronald Green. 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 At the end of the day, he is your brother. Yeah. Yeah. He was my brother and he's your brother too. No justice. No peace. 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 Save me. Save me. Save me. Save me. What do you want to talk? Um, real quick. I wanna. I drove five hours to be here. It was very necessary for us to be here. I'm with Louisiana United International, and we are a force for justice. What I saw happen in this courtroom today was a disgrace to the whole United States of America. It was obvious that the fix was in. And when I say the fix was in, I'm talking about the district attorney, John Belton, the prosecutor, his assistant, Hugo Holland, the um, attorney for, and I'm not going to say his name, but the attorney for the criminal that committed a murder, that killed Ronald Green, and helped assist it along with five others to murder him on video because it was kill a nigga night. Mm -hmm. The judge, the clerk of courts that was so rude and disrespected to us as victims in the courtroom. The dilapidated courtroom that didn't have air conditioning. Come on now. No cameras. Bradley toe up seat, dirty floors. We were so disrespected as victims in this courtroom because the fix was in. And when I say that the judge, the prosecutor, the attorney, um, the clerk of courts, all of them working together to free a criminal that committed a murder on video. On, that ain't right. Yeah. We were so disrespected. And the whole United States of America need to know what happened to us right. today yes, in that right. courtroom. Yeah. Yes, right. We're serious about this type of treatment, people. We will not tolerate. This is totally unacceptable, Ms. unacceptable Mrs. Mona Green. They murdered your son on video. And then the judge had a nerve to say, you can't speak to the criminal 
just speak to the court. Shame. They controlled the narrative the whole way. They controlled everything. You know, I am so saddened by the fact that we are black and they are white. Because we're in the 21st century and why would you pick one group over another group mm -hmm. yeah. and make us feel that we're less than? Mm -hmm. Make us feel like we're way back in the slavery days. This is a disgrace to the whole United States of America. What happened here in Farmersville at the Union Parish Courthouse yes. in the state of Louisiana. Yeah. And we're saying it's not over. It's not, it's not, right. Right. It's not, it's not, it's not over. over. It's not over, Miss Monica. It's not over because we're demanding that some big eyes, big eyes, is watching what happened here today and what's been going on for decades. And we want the people to come out and unite and stand with us because this is ground zero for Louisiana. Oh, yeah. It starts here right now today. Yeah. Yeah. And I looked at that DA in his face and I said, what does it feel to be a Sambo when you've been handpicked and paid to represent us? And you are not for us. That's right. And you look at us in our face, in our eyes. Yeah. Back door dealing. Yeah. We know you've been paid and bought off yeah. with your price tags hanging on you all the way down to the floor. Mm -hmm. You better preach, girl. We can't take this anymore. We can't take this anymore, especially when our own people are selling us out. Come on now. Let's get and get From the governor's office on down, they covered up this crime. They covered up this murder. They covered it up from day one. From the governor's office on down. That's right. When you got a murder on video. On video. Saying they gonna beat the ever living effing out of Ronald Green yes. because it was kill a nigga night. Come on now. Common mm. language, common language and state troopers. Can't make it no plainer than that. So Is that common language you say? That's, That's what like they you. say? And it was told to us. That's right. By those who work side by side with them. Wow. That's right. Who wear the badge. And then they get rid cops. of the police officer, the good cop. We ain't making this up. You can't guess it right there. Come on. They they you mean to tell me you gonna let somebody take a plea? To murder. No to murder? No contest. Probation, one year probation is all he got, people. Special provisions. With special provisions. Right. They probably said that's a the football disgrace. Game. Football games. Like John Cleary. And he's walking in the streets. He left out of the courtroom in a nice blue suit. Mm -hmm. He ain't going to forget Ronnie's voice while he was killing him. None of them are going to overlook the sounds of Ronnie screaming. Right. I hope Say they that. take it to their grave. I hope they'll never have a peaceful night's sleep. Come on now. I hope they hear Ronnie Look screaming right. for his life. I hope they see his bloody face, his yeah. battered body, yeah. while they beat and tortured him while he was handcuffed and leg fucking shackled. Right. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. I see this is what it is. You saw it on camera, but you want to overlook yeah. what they did. Yeah. Exactly. Killed a man, tortured him to death while he was shackled and handcuffed. Right. And, and you drug him. Six months suspended time. Mm. That ain't right. right. That's not right. And if the tables were turned, we all going to jail. That's right. If we were driving the car, we all going to jail. That's right. For life. Throwing away the key. I want to say one thing. Evidently, it takes everyone who has and knows how to wear big boy pants to get this damn work done. Yeah. So all I can say is collectively, we need to look past yeah. what happened because Ronnie ain't the only one. 
We're looking at mothers, yeah. families, right. who's continuously going through this as we speak. As we speak. So I say for those of you who know it, who live it, who live no other way, put your big pants on, big boy drawers on, whichever way you want to put it. There's a lot of damn work to be done. Right. And collectively, we can do it. Yeah. Put your anger to work. You know our contact, we know your contact. Let's keep this show because there's more that needs to be benefited, there's more work to be done. Evidently, we're the only ones that know how to wear big boy pants. Let it be known. And, and we want to say, we want to say one more thing about the fact of this dilapidated courthouse. We want to speak to the atmosphere that this courthouse will come down and that these people that are in here will be replaced yes. Amen. Yeah. by people that will pursue justice. That's yeah. right. For all, not some, for all. Yes, justice for all. Thank you. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. I want to say we have families here. I do want to say I want to acknowledge this mother here. She's here and she's here from Texas. For everyone here who's from New York, California. New Orleans. New Orleans. Yes. Yes. So here she is, Mr. Tiffany speak. Rochelle. Yeah, she's going to speak. Wow. Speak on it. You can just talk into your Hi, my name is Tiffany Rochelle. I'm from Houston, Texas. Um, my son, Jalen Randall, was murdered uh, April the 27th, 2022. And he was murdered and it was on camera and they no build the case. Mm. Now we are getting ready to go through a dismissal um, trial for the city of Houston and the police officer, which we are gonna say that God is gonna be into this, this thing. And I know God was in this courthouse today mm -hmm. and it's not over no. until God says it's over. Right. And we have to trust and believe that he is on our side. Yeah. It may not be what we want it to be, but he's coming. Yeah. They will not, they will not see victory. They will not. The, the time that he has in jail, Ronald Green face is gonna appear. That's right. The time he closes his eyes, yes. Ronald Green is gonna appear. So we have to keep the faith. We gotta hold on. We gotta stay strong as mothers. As mothers that yes. lost their loved ones, we have to stay strong and we have to stand. This man should not be able to, the, the conditions that they had, mm. how can he be back on the street as an officer right. after to doing do things that's not right? Serve and protect, they need to take that off their right. little um, yes. yes. Serve, they don't serve us, nor do they protect us. Right. They protect themselves. So, therefore, we have to stand, we have to bring people together, regardless to if they experience, not experience. These are our children. Yes. These are our babies. Mm -hmm. So we got to stop them from killing our kids. We have to stop them from killing our children kids we have to stand we have to be counted we are victorious we got to walk with our heads up like we own this 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 nation that's right that's like she said kings and queens we cannot give up i'm not going to give up on my child i'm not going to give up on my child i'm not going to give up on ronald green I'm not going to give up on none of the mothers that's facing this situation. Not only the mothers, but the fathers. Yeah. Not only the fathers, but the children the that don't have their the father. She would not ever have to, she, she's lost. Mm -hmm. She's lost someone. She would never have him to go on prom, to see her graduate, to see her get married. She has lost someone in her life that is so valuable to her. So this is why we have to stand. This is why we have to come together. Thank you. We got the power. We got the power. We got the power. We got the power. You don't have to hold Good evening, everyone, and, and thank you all for being here as um, a survivor family. We come into these spaces just believing that this case will be that case where our families will one day 
have some semblance of accountability. And my heart is so broken. Um, being a daughter of Louisiana, a native of New Orleans, um, attending Grambling State University, knowing this parish so deeply, and to see that this has been the ultimate outcome of a family struggle for five years. We were starting and we had this momentum so great. And we had this courageous confidence that this would be the day. But then as I looked at the state of Louisiana and Union Parish, where is the union? How could we ever have confidence in a system that is often always the system that is oppressive to our people. The system where they don't care about righteous justice, where they don't care about truth, where they don't care about what they see on camera, where they see that family standing with all of our breath and all of our resources and all of our bodies coming together, pleading for a system to see us, to feel us, to hear us, and then to be slapped in the face and betrayed ultimately every in single every single turn we've often been betrayed by those that we trust by those that we hire by those that we look to for direction and guidance you see with a broken heart you sometimes don't see it clear and you're hoping that the eyes that are standing with you and the eyes that have been elected into these positions are doing the right work for you. But sometimes you can't, because sometimes you also have to be your own public investigator, your private investigator, learning the rules and the statutes for yourself because you often feel betrayed by this system. Because there is no confidence. And who can we trust when it's our blood that's on the ground? You see, what you feel today, and as you stay and you stand with us today, Understand that this is not just one day. We need you. We need the Department of Justice to come in like ever, never before. We need to have eyes that are greater than Union Parish, greater than the DA, greater than what we can see here today. We need divine intervention at this point. And when we put out a call to action, people, we need you to do the work. We need you to share. We need you to get into the streets with us. We need you to say and do what you say you're going to do. And we need you to pull into your uh, your pockets and help us as we travel to and from trying to fight for justice. You see, when we share a cash app in a Venmo, we really need to get to court. When we share that we need help, we really do need help because it costs all of us to get to these places. I'm coming from Tampa, Florida, okay? Most of the families you see today, we have cases too. We have law legal fees, we have lawyers, we have families that are still children surviving through this. No, it's not fair. It's not fair, but this is a cycle of violence that continues to precipitate its violence upon us. And I mean to tell you, you don't ever want to sit in these shoes. You don't ever want this life. And most of you probably look at us like those poor people. You see, those poor people. Don't do that. But understand, that what you see today and what you see as our life today can be your life tonight. It can be you tonight. Yes. So as you look at us and you pour out your heart and you feel disappointed about what happened on today, I want you to hold on to that disappointment and hurt and let that be fuel and fire. Fuel and fire to say that we as a family, we as a coalition of supporters, we can't stop and we won't stop. That's right, yes. we won't stop. Yes. We can't stop and we, we won't, won't stop. stop. You can't stop after That's today. Right. You can't stop after today. Thank you, I am Deanna Joseph. I am from Tampa, Florida. 
I am the co-founder of Black Lives Matter Grassroots Florida, the first family survivor chapter. Mm -hmm. I am also the co-founder of the Andrew Joseph Foundation because my son was 14 when he was killed at a school fair mm -hmm. on student day, February 7, 2014. It's been 10 years. 10 years of fighting and struggling on Wednesday. While I'm here, I'm also having a court of appeals on a trial that we were victorious in winning. But because of qualified immunity, mm. our case is being reviewed again through oral arguments on Wednesday. So when I say it don't stop, it don't stop. Wow. stop. thank you. Thank you. Ronald Green, Sandy Green! Ronald Green! Ronald Green! Ronald Green! Hi, good morning. I'm Sabrina Foster. My son was murdered in Alabama, Carrollton, Alabama. But before we talk about my loss, about my son's murder, I just want to say how disappointed I am in the judge decision, as well as D.A. Belton. He spoke about his father being part of the uh, march with Martin Luther King. I think he got the letters messed up because He's definitely part of the KKK. Absolutely. He went from MLK to KKK. And I am so disappointed because he's a man of color. Mm -hmm. And because this video shows what happened to Rollin, you would think that he would do the right thing. Not because of his color and our color, but because of the right thing to do. Right. So, but we keep saying that it's getting worse here, but it's never gotten better since we've been here for slavery. So things are not changing, and it hasn't changed. But we had to watch out who we vote for. We had to get out and vote. We have to get out and vote. Get these motherfuckers, I'm sorry to say, but get them, get them out. I do have a court date coming. Don't know when, but it's coming. My son was murdered driving while black, going to a business meeting, okay? He's a man of color. He didn't make it back home. They took him in and they murdered him three days later. At least that's what they say. I believe it probably happened that same day. So we do have a court date coming up. But I pray, I pray that God is on our side. I'm not saying God is not on Mona's family side because this is not the end. So keep praying for us. Pray for Mona and her family. Pray for all us impacted families who have to continue to cry. My son's death didn't, didn't just last just that moment. It's still lasting. I cry every day. My family is in turmoil because of my son's death. And it's been two and a half years. My son was only 31. He left behind his family, his four daughters his wife, his sister, his dad, and me, and his aunts and uncles, and a plethora of family and friends. And we still mourn his loss. So he's gone, but we continue to mourn. And they don't get it. They just don't get it, how we still suffer. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. God bless the Green family. Yeah. Thank you. Who's house? Our house. Who's house? Our house. Who's house? Our house. So first of all, my name is Beatrice X, AKA Aunt B. I am with the uh, Love Not Blood campaign and Families United for Justice Network. First of all, I want us to give it up for this Green family. Give it up for the Green family. Give it up, yeah. give it up, yeah. give it up, yeah. give it up. Yeah. Give it up. Oh, yeah. Go back five years. Yeah. Those wasn't with them. They are bear witness. Yeah. They was doing it. They was out here. Right. Coming to this little hick ass town, racist, white supremacist town See called Marlinsville that showed you when you come in there with them damn Confederate, Confederate flags yes. letting you know where you coming. See. They did that for years until they actually got five officers charged. Give it up for the family. 
Yeah. Give it up. I want y'all to give it up yeah. for the family. Yeah. Give it up for the family because they did that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how hard that is to have your loved one dead and killed, but you out here doing this? Yeah. Deep in the dirt. Deep in the dirt. Damn near in the grave with your loved one because this shit will take you to the grave. Yeah. It will take you to the grave. And we're not just talking about right now in 2024. We're talking about as black people 460 plus years of this. Right. Think about that. 460 plus years of this very thing that we're experiencing in 2024 while we're still having children, while we're still having grandchildren, while we're still having great-grandchildren. This is the shit we want to give them. Is this what we want to give them? We have to do something different, and we have to do more. Some of us going to die. I know some of us scared. I'm not scared. So some of us, the ones that are scared, they just stay back. And let the ones that ain't scared, let them do it. Don't be, don't be stopping them with that Jesus, milk toast Jesus stuff. Because we are in a time of war. And if you don't understand that, if you didn't understand what went on today in that courtroom, which is the pure of white supremacy, to tell a family not to, you can have an impact statement. I never heard this shit before in my life. And I don't cuss y'all, but I'm cussing because I'm really mad about all this racism and white supremacy that's going on that we have to deal with and we have to fight. See, we're not sitting back watching TV. Everybody out here, we're in this shit. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Every single day, every, day, every day. single minute right. that this is our reality, that we have to walk into these kind of white supremacist courts, even our attorneys, our black attorneys, the, the, the women, they have a hard time, but you know the white men love black women, so they're going to get a little inch over, right? But you ask these black men that have to go in front of these racist white crackers who hate them simply because they're black? And they have to do, we're all in this. So to have somebody like Belton to do what he did is treason. It's treason. That's what he committed. And we cannot let him off the hook. I'm not sure why anybody was hugging that motherfucker today. Excuse my language. I don't see how anybody was. Let him even get in a space. It should have been like this. Until you do right by me and my family, everything you touch. That's what he gets. That's what he gets. That's what he gets. And so anyway, I just really wanted to get up here and thank this family. Because I am in admiration of the family. Yes, there's a lot of people here. We came. They came to us in 2021 or whenever. And, they, and people come and people come and thank everybody for being here. But don't get it twisted. This family, the Green family, they got this popping. They got this started. And they didn't have no big name. They didn't have none of that stuff. They continue to stay in the dirt, ten toes down, ten toes down in the dirt doing this work. Oh, yes. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, Uncle Bobby. Uh, so, anyway, I was just saying that we have to honor, I want, y'all not really, to me, y'all ain't giving it up to this family like I think you should. You should give it up to the Green family. Can you give it up to the Green family? Give it up to the Green family. Give it up to the Green family. Give it up. Give it up. They were able. They were, it's not their fault this shit happened today. They just did it in a time of white supremacy. But they did their job. They worked and got these five chairs charge in this little white racist white supremacy town the family give it up for the green family give it up yeah. Yeah. i know everybody sacrificed one, one, one credit for what you did let god give you that credit but right now we need to give the credit yeah. to the family because it is the family that was in the trenches when there was nobody around and those are the stories you need to hear about and let them tell that story. Yeah. Okay, so I'm supposed to bring up Uncle Bobby. Okay. Give it up for the Green family. Yeah. Say his name. Green. 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 Well, 
Well, hello everyone. First, I am affectionately known to the community as Uncle Bobby. I'm the uncle of Oscar Grant. And for those who may not know who Oscar Grant is, because it did happen 15 years ago, is the young man that was killed at the Fruitville Bark Station in Oakland, California, on January 1st, 2009. And as a result, of course, it was murder. Uh, a movie came out called Fruitville Station. And for those who know Michael B. Jordan, he played my nephew Oscar Grant. And from there, as you know, uh, Michael blew up. Brian Kruger blew up, and sadly, police violence blew up. Mm -hmm. Let's be clear about that, right? I am, um, uh, you know, I was thinking about what happened in the courtroom and the joy we had when we was, I think we were in Baton Rouge when we were celebrating the five indictments of the police officers who had killed Robert Green. And we were all there. I remember Lee Merritt being there, and we were just overjoyed. But then, of course, uh, we started showing up here, and we met Belton, and we thought we had some hope. You know, we had a brother, district attorney, in a country hick town, that we, at least I believe, uh, gave some hope. And then as I listened to him, and he said he's just a country attorney, and he's not really skilled enough to actually represent the family, and he wanted to hire a retired racist previous district attorney that no longer worked for Union Parish. He brought a racist out of retirement to lead this family down this journey to where we're at today with basically no indictment. Shame on him. Shame, Shame on him. Shame on him. Shame on him. So though we know Corey York and others was responsible for Ronald Green's murder, yeah. Bell is the corporate for allowing them to get away with her. Right? Now listen, we can, we can scream and holler, and the family has a right to be in pain, to be angry, and scream and holler. But us here, that's not directly tied to Ronald through blood, must think, what can we do to stop a tragedy like this? Now I'm clear, when we were coming to these meetings, Belton made it clear that he was a country attorney. He hired Hugo, who we knew was a racist, he said it was a and we misstepped. We didn't challenge that hard enough. So part of this tragedy is our fault, not the family's fault, because the family is in pain, and they're just trying to get justice. But for us that set up in there and heard him say that, our initial target should have been Belton himself. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to say today that though we're still going to seek to get justice for Brown, we cannot let Belton be reelected in 2026. I hope you hear what I'm saying. Listen, there was a time period where these chief, the police chief were allowing their officers to kill and get away with it. And we began to target the police chief. And Oscar Grant, Chief Lee had to resign. In Trayvon Martin's case, Chief G had to resign. In Laquan McDonald's case, if I remember correctly, Chief Schultz had to resign. In um, Mario Woods' case in San Francisco, Chief Sir, what was his name? Sir, had to resign. What I'm telling you is that sometimes we have to target those so-called leaders that's supposed to be representing us. Yes. That's right. Now we cannot go to sleep and just allow Belton to show up to work tomorrow as if he's done a great thing. We have a responsibility to attack Belton. Because listen, another black man is going to be killed in this union parish. And his, that family is going to have to deal with Belton. Now we know what that family is going to expect, or we should know what that family should expect, but which is false, and we need to make sure that they are aware that they are dealing with the person that will sell them out. Now, what can we do from this day forward, going forward, in this tragedy that we have witnessed today? I'm not from here, but I can support. Well, whoever's from Union Parish has to begin to create flyers to not only tell their story about what Belton did to this Ronald Green family, but to ensure that this community is aware, the black community, is aware that Belton 
is black on the outside, but it is not nowhere black about supporting real black change for families that's been impacted by this racist system. And so listen, we cannot fail another family. We have a responsibility to begin to figure out what we can do to make sure that he is unnoticed about what he's done. And when we start calling out these characters that have attacked and allowed the system to perpetrate their harms on our family like they have, we have to stop that. And it's that part that will cause the next black person that supposedly that may become district attorney in Union Parish to think about his future. Belton was running for uh, attorney general of the state of Louisiana, and he dropped out. But that doesn't mean his political career is over. So we cannot continue to hug someone that don't care about our plight and our struggle and witness Ronald Green being murdered and still came in smiling every day. Every day. We had a white district attorney that was angry at the murderers that killed Oscar Grant. Come on now, talk about it. He did his job. He did his job, but at least he did his job and got him arrested. We made him. That's right. Right. We made him. That's right. We did. We did, did make him. Don't give him no cookies. But the bottom line is, we didn't make Belton do what he should have done. Right. We made the deal. And so I'm here to say, though we were joyful in the beginning when those five officers were indicted. We have learned today that just because they indicted does not mean the battle is over. Yeah, that's right. The real responsibility begins when that happens. So let us remember the journey going forward. If we ever have to come back to Union Pass and what it's really about, it's not about the indictments. It's not about just believing that they're going to be nice and make it happen. We have to enforce it. And I've seen over and over and over, as Lee can talk about what happened with Wanda's case, which was very similar to this. And as you know, I'm talking about Wanda Cooper. The white boys are in prison. Wanda led the campaign like the Green family, but the community also spoke up concerning them same characters that killed Ahmad Abu. So in closing, you know, um, this is a painful closing. It's a very painful closing. It's not but I'm here, it's not closed. Not that, not right, closed. just this hearing is closed. But the journey is not over. Yeah. You know, we got some avenues that we can work. So it's just a matter of working those avenues. And now all of us that are standing here to continue to be supportive of the family, if they call and say show up to the state capital of Louisiana for whatever legislative legislation that they may be working on or a campaign that they may be working on to bring about some real systemic change, we have to be in support. I mean, we can be mad all day long but what has been done has been done, but now we gotta take an opportunity, we gotta take this, this, this tragic, sick situation and turn it into something positive. Okay. Some form of victory. Lee. So let me close. Uh, and, oh, Lee, coming up? Come on up, Lee. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! I would start with one of my favorite chants, but kids cover your ears. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Four, That's twelve! Okay, I know that one. <laughs> Actually, I, I'm going to back up. Um, when states fail my families, the families that I get to represent, I, I consider myself a part of the Green family. Yeah. Um, there's actually a poem that I think of. It's by Claude McKay. It's called If We Must Die. It says, If we must die, let it not be like hogs, hunted and pinned in an inglorious spot, while round us bark the mad and hungry dogs, making their mock at our accursed lot. If we must die, let us nobly die, so that our blood may not be shed in vain, so even the enemies we defy will be constrained to honor us, though, though dead. O oh, kinsmen, let us, let us meet the common foe, though far outnumbered, let us show ourselves brave. And for every thousand blow, throw one death blow. Throw what lie before us but the open grave. And this is the important part. Like men and women, we must meet this murderous, cowardly pack, pinned to the wall, dying, but fighting back. There you go. I love to stand with the Ronald Green family because this is a community of fighters. Yes. And the fight doesn't yes. stop. Yes. yes. We fight. We win. We win. We win. We, win. we, win. we have now 
the opportunity, and we talked about this in our last meeting as a team and as a family, that the family's opportunity to bring the facts of what happened to Ronald Green before the federal court right. now commences. Right. The evidence that this court refused to turn on, that they did not want in the public eye, it's now in the family's hand. They now have the, the power of subpoena. They have the power of discovery. They have the power of deposition. They have the power of an interrogatory. They don't have to close their case until they're satisfied that every stone has been turned over and every issue has been exposed. And that gets to be my job. Yeah. I get to be a part of the team. Yeah. 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 I've been thinking about the last words. Uh, yeah, I opened up my laptop for the last time I had to give public comment. And on the screen in big bold letters was all praise to Allah in every situation. Mm. And those were the last words of Marcellus Williams before he was executed by the state of Missouri. Mm. And it was a reminder that black death is a commodity in America. I, I, I don't call on the name Allah, I call God Yahweh. The, I, the idea of Allah was that, that there is a creator God. It's mm. a common theme in uh, Islam, it's a common theme in Catholicism, it's a common theme in Judaism, it's a common theme in Christianity. That we believe in a singular, powerful, all-powerful creator God. That's it. And that he gets to have the last word. That's it. So that when Marcellus Williams was facing lethal injection for a crime that he didn't commit by a murderous state, he said that in all things, may Allah get the glory. In, in this thing, I we will continue to fight to make sure that God That's it. gets the glory. That's it. Yes. And this fight is far from over. Right. I, was, uh, I was listening to a song, if I could stand just a little longer. That, but I'm the last person to speak, right? I, 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 I want to say something. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry, I'm you sorry. go ahead. But I'm, I'm yeah, go the, ahead. Um, I was listening to Tupac, honestly. Uh, he he um, came out with his first album in 91. It was called um, Tupacalypse Now. The song you all know on it is called Brenda's Got a Baby. But there's another song going to call it My Last Words. It's with Ice Cube and Ice-T and Tupac. And they all offer their last words. Tupac offered first uh, similar words to Ron, Ron's last words. He says, I'm your brother. He said that black men are more powerful than society gives them credit for. He went a little further, being a California folk. He said that black and brown people together were more powerful than we appreciate. And if we br brought those two communities together, there's nothing that could stop us. Tupac's 19 year olds, Tupac's verse and last words had me thinking about Martin Luther King's last words. In 68, a few months before he was murdered, he said that he was afraid that we had integrated into a burning house. That there had to be a revolution of values in America before we could move forward. He said the first part of the movement that we are inheritors from, the first part of this movement for America was free. It was free to give us the franchise, the vote. It didn't cost America anything. In fact, America benefited from integrating the lunch counters in places of public accommodation. That was free. The next part of the movement is going to cost them something. It's going to be about improving our schools and ending the school to prison pipeline. It's going to be about ending the, uh, the period of mass incarceration. It's going to be about housing, yeah. about land grants, about reparations. Yeah. He said it's going to cost the nation something. And the nation was too busy at the time squandering its resources on a foreign war. Same thing we're doing today. That's right. And he says, before we can deal with the issues here as a country, in Dr. King's last words, uh, that we would have to deal with a moral revolution, a revolution in values, where we no longer praise the war machine. Right. Instead of pursuing those policies in the last 50 years, the last 50 years that black folks have had the complete vote in this country, we've done the opposite. We've taken the foreign wars, we've inverted them, we've taken those tools that our tax dollars paid for and we brought them back home. We started a war right here on home. We called the war on drugs, but it was really a war on black and brown communities. Yeah. Yeah. It was a war on Ronald Green. It was a war on That's the people right. of this parish. And, and, um, and yeah, it was not only mean-spirited and racist and centered in things like nigga night, but it was a war directed at our community. And we feel bad, and I think we begin to process it, right? Pretending to be full citizens, but facing the realities of where we are. But it, uh, and this is where I'll end. But it comes down to when, we, when we're faced with what Union Parish did today, with the absolute lack of justice in this case, we can, it, it, there's, a, it, there's a psychological mechanism, it's called you can fight or you flight. 
fight or flight me mechanism. Mm. And I love the Green family because they don't got no running. Yeah. This community don't got no running. We're going to fight back, and this, this is just the beginning. Thank you. Yes. Protesters! No, no peace. peace! Protesters! No, no peace. peace! Protesters! No, no peace. peace! To God get the glory. At the end of the day, we still have victory. Because <laughs> we serve a God that, that has the victory. Yes. At the end of the day, guess what? We're going to continue to stand on God's word. It ain't over until God say it over. <laughs> mm. Jesus. Oh, God. Mm. The word of God says, I am the first and the last. I am the beginning. We have to start at the beginning. And we know God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But the word of God tells us, uh, Jesus. Mm. Oh, God, glory. The word of God tells us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We have to continue to look into the hills from which comes our help. We got to realize that God is our strength in a very time of need. We got to stand on God. This is not the end. You can rest for sure, and I believe, because I believe in the word of God. And what God words. <laughs> they did wrong, they killed him. Yeah, they killed him, but at the end, they not resting. They got a country, they not resting. Oh, God, Jesus, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. They is not resting. I just believe in my soul, they is not resting. You cannot do evil and continue like you want. Don't have glory in it. God's not a part of it. At the end, God got the victory. He said, revenge is mine, say the Lord. I will repay. Just leave it in God's hand. We got to fight, we got to fight, but no one thing. God got the last say so. Yes. And we're gonna believe and trust in God to the end. If we can't stand on God's word, we ain't standing on nothing. There you go. It is God's word at the end, it's gonna be at the beginning. God got the last say so. But John Belton and the governor and all the rest of them put their hand in that evil work. Mm -hmm. Guess what? They gonna pay for it. Yeah, I don't care who it is, even if it's come down to me. If I commit a murder or whatever sin, it ain't got to be a murder sin. It can be any sin. Guess what? If I agree with it, I did it myself. That's, right. That's what the word of God said. Yep. You partaking in evil doing. Yep. Guess what? You gonna pay for it. That's right. Wrong is wrong all day long. All day right long. is right all day long. Yeah. And they know what they did was wrong. Yeah. Right. And they don't have no peace in it. That's but right. we gonna continue to look into God, yeah. from which comes all our help. And we know all our help comes from God. Yeah. If God said it, we can stand on it. We gonna believe it. It ain't over until God says it's over. Yeah. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. If we don't get it, shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down. Uh, I'm Mike McClanahan. I'm NAACP of Louisiana State Conference President. Uh, we've been with the Ronald Green family for a long time, and my heart goes out to not only Ms. Bone and her family, but all the and mothers and fathers are suffering through these tragedies. But this is this is really not the, the first time this has happened. This ain't gonna be the last. I, they expect our community to know they, to think that this is a common occurrence. It's not common for human beings to be killed and slaughtered in the streets. Right. We'll look over, we might be here today, march in the front of the courthouse. What happens tomorrow? Yeah. What happens on, on what happens on today, election? early voting, tomorrow's early voting, what happens on November the 5th? Yeah. What happens then? I've been a part of marches, protests, cities, buy-ins, throw-ins, all that. that. That does matter. But if you want to get rid of John Belton, he was elected. You have to either elect him or unelect him. The judge, he was elected. You either elect him or you unelect him. Those people, you can do something about that. You, I, I don't know who's from Farmerville that's here. Somebody from Farmer should be here. This happened in Farmerville. It happened in Farmerville, it'll happen in Baton, it happened in Baton Rouge, it happens in New Orleans, it happens in Houston, it happens in Dallas, it happens in Tampa, it happens in Miami, it happens in DC, it happens in Seattle, it happens everywhere. Yeah. Every day is a day for them to slaughter us. We should be tired. We, are. we don't. 
Because it, you say it ain't gonna happen to my son. I got a 26 year old son. I'm, listen, listen. I'm a peaceful guy. I promise you, I don't know what happened if you do something to mine. I don't. If the guy got his hand on me, he don't. He don't. It's painful. We should not have to endure that. We need to start something. The only way to get people's attention, white folk attention, get my attention to mess with my money. That should be some type of economic something to go for, get their attention. Once you get their damn attention, then you should put them on the put them on the ground. But you first have to get their attention. Marching may not get their attention. They say they're looking at their watch saying, oh, give them a few more minutes, they'll be gone. Give them a few more days, they ain't gonna come back. Nothing changes. You have to hit them where it hurts them. You need pass the poor town. They can't stand for no more so no more money to leave this town. You gotta hit them now. You gotta get the past president's attention. You have to do that. We can march all day and chant all day. That sounds good. We get photo ops. You gotta hit these racist ass people in their pockets. You gotta get their damn attention. You gotta start voting. If you don't vote, I'm telling you, it ain't gonna change. You gotta tell these scared uh, politicians either they gonna be a part of the solution or get their ass out the way. That's right. You gotta go to some. Uh, somebody said earlier, all can all skin folk ain't can folk. Get rid of that ass too. We have to be. We have to stay with this all day. I, I'm 24, 365. I'm gonna get a day off because every day somebody calls me about something to happen to somebody they love. Every single day, I'm there and ain't nobody else is there. We select, we select who we, what, what fight we take on. I don't get that opportunity. I am not selective. You call me, you get all of me and get all my branches, all of my people. We don't have a, I don't take a day off. I don't. Can we, we get the NAACP to help investigate this corrupt district attorney and indict him and put him in jail for what he did in here today? All right, see, so I'm going to I'm show you, I'm going to talk like a lawyer now. Right, talk like a lawyer. Only way you get an indictment of him, somebody has to be over him. So you talking about a legal matter. That means you just can't see. I stand up here and say I want to indict. I want to indict the DA. Somebody with some legal authority got. So you got to either you got to get the Supreme Court and say he's done something that's going to get him taken off the bench, out of his job. The best way to get him is to unindict, is to unelect him. He was elected. He was elected. And you listen. You can recall him. Except to call a recall. That means enough of us get together and to say what we voted him in. Enough of us get together and say we're going to unelect him. But it got to be from Union Parish. If you're not from Union Parish, your vote ain't going to count. Because he's from Union Parish. You got to understand the rules and the rules of engagement. If you don't, you're spinning your wheels. You got to. You got to be smart about your fight. You got you to gotta be smart about the weapons you use in the fight. Or not, I'm telling you, your fight's gonna be in vain. See, look, I got old in this fight. Some of y'all still got good knees, <laughs> good back, good head. I ain't got hardly none of that. Mm -hmm. But whatever I got, I'm gonna use it till I don't have it no more. There you go. I'm telling you, this ain't the first. Somebody talk about Aaron Bowman. This is this how this works too. And these low down, racist ass parishes is gonna take 12 jurors. Y'all don't even want to serve on the jury. If y'all get a letter, y'all come come say, look, my back hurt, my cheering ain't got nobody to watch them, so they're going to exclude you from the jury. All white folks get on. You think a white man going to, you think a white jury is going to convict a white police officer for killing a black man? Hell no! But I tell the deal, I want to do, just, just doing what you do to me. What you want to do is arrest his ass, Make a pile lawyer, make a post a bond, and let's take his ass to trial. And then what it is. They don't even get that, they don't even get to do that. Yeah. Because because by the time they do it, they get a promotion, they get a raise. I was with Ms. Mona uh, a couple years in the legislature trying to change the law that says if a police officer kills you, he gets full pension. That money should go toward the family. Absolutely. Yeah. He shouldn't have to uh, retire with all the money he got because he was low down, yeah, because he was a low down ass. Uh, uh, scared ass cat. But you know, we have to change the way we fight these cats. You know, uh, sometimes drastic measures requires drastic things to happen. I don't know what that is, but we got to change some of this stuff, man, because it's not getting any better. And we're going to have this fight. It's, so you can't be, you can't be a, 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 a sprinter. You can't. It's a marathon. We've been fighting this fight. We're going to fight this fight till Jesus come back. When he come back, it's going to all be over. But until then, we fight on no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace.
No justice! No peace! Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you guys, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Um, I can't really share my, my true feelings right now because it's not going to be good. Um, but today, uh, overall, y'all, I just feel grateful for the progress that we have made. Um, like Aunt B said, you know, it's a green family that has pushed and, and, and we, we've just continued to push, you know, throughout this whole journey, y'all. And um, I just remember when we first got that, that phone call saying that Ron was in a car accident. We called. When I tell you, we called from the West Coast to Philly, New Jersey, Connecticut. We searched all over the United States looking for an attorney that would take our case. And we stayed up all night sending out emails. And this fight, yeah, getting like free consultations just for somebody to hear that, you know, Ron was killed in the car accident. But long story short, y'all, when I think back back to 2019, no, I, no, I don't want to put nobody out like that. I, I want to stay on a positive note to just, you know, speak that's with right. words that's of, right, of, of, of positivity because there's right, some, because there's some crooked ass right. attorneys out there that right. had our case and dropped it within 72 hours. Because um, of yeah, because right. of the state troopers, he was threatened. They got a call. When they found out they was trooping, they, they, they dropped no, the case. No, 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 no. We're going to keep it positive. It's okay. Gotta hit with the but just know, y'all, there are not enough good attorneys that are out here right. practicing and fighting the good fight. And, y'all, I just want to bring uh, Lee Merritt back up here because he responded to a, a text yeah, message, woo! y'all, that I sent to him through Messenger. And within, I swear, 30 days, it, I mean, I sent it to him December 16th of 2019, y'all. He responded on January 3rd of 2020, saying, I, I will set up a call. And when he set up that call, I was like, Ma, I think this is Lee Merritt. I don't know. So when we got that call, my mom put him on speaker, and she's like, is this him? I was like, I don't know. It sounded like him. I've been watching his Facebook videos, and uh, sure enough, it was Lee Merritt. <laughs> and uh, yeah, in the flesh. And y'all, I, thank God. Amen. Yeah, happened. we would not be here because Lee, he he didn't have that many contacts here in the state of Louisiana. He lived at the time. Where are you? Up somewhere up north, Dallas. Yeah. But um, he responded to our, our, our cry for help, y'all. Yeah, that's right. And so for you uh, students here that are with Dillard University, if y'all want to come up, come on. We got some law students here from Dillard University. Oh, and uh, got the power? we got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. And Professor, Professor Ishmael, come on, come please up. come. All right. Please come up. It is, it is so important that you ladies, when y'all get in this fight, you know, stay on the right side of justice. Yes. Families like mine, we have uh, Tiffany, yes. Tiffany, uh, Rochelle, her family, uh, the Glenn Foster family who lost their son due to police brutality. We need you guys to not only answer your call, but respond and help our families. We need you guys. You feel me? So, Mr. Lee Merritt, y'all, I just want y'all to give him a, a round of applause because if it wasn't for this young brother, he hasn't been in the fight for many years, but he's doing the work that nobody wants to do. You know what I'm saying? So, Lee, we, we're forever grateful for you because, yeah. We're on life support. I mean, we're still on life support, but we're going to keep pushing, y'all. We're going to keep pushing. So, I want to thank you guys for driving the distance. 
to be here with us. Yeah. And also now, you know, we're partnered up with uh, Ben Fox Law Firm. Yeah. We have Bruce yeah. Silky Who's here? Yeah. Silky Slim. Y'all want to talk? Thurgood. Yeah. 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 Speech. Yeah, we got a new Thurgood in here. So y'all come to the front. Billy, you want to say something? No, but just say, like, what happened when you got that call? Like I said before, I'm, I'm really proud to stand with this family. I, I run a firm, I graduated law school actually in 2012, right? Um, after coaching and teaching for a while. And I joined a big major law firm. It was actually Johnny Cochran's firm. It was a big deal for me. Yeah. Well, they denied us. And, um, and I realized that they weren't practicing law the way that I aspired to practice. The reason I went to law school was to help families. And so I started my own practice where I could answer phone calls. And your call, uh, your family's call, as, as mentioned earlier, was similar to uh, the call I got about Ahmaud Arbery. It was a family who desperately needed help for a tragic situation that they were not able to explain in legal terms that was going to get them past the threshold. Wanda kept saying her son was accused of breaking into someone's home. And in Ron's case, they kept saying, you know, we were saying that we believe or we've been told that he died in a car accident. Not, none of those turned out to be true, but I knew why attorneys were walking away from it quickly. And attorneys were telling me, no money there, nobody to sue. Uh, in Ahmad's case, uh, in this case, you know, it was probably just one of those things as Louisiana you can't win. And these are the cases that we all need to fight. Yeah. Think that, that we yes. need to learn to reject things that we simply find unacceptable. I find the murder of Ronald Green unacceptable. And I don't care totally what this court says. Oh, I don't care what the federal government says. Yeah. It's something that I don't tolerate. The last thing I'll say, you know, um, I'm a constitutional attorney. I'm, a pro I'm, a, I'm proud to be a constitutional attorney. Uh, a lot of people try to make civil rights leaders and civil rights attorneys anti-American. I think we're the heart of America. Yes. And, and at the heart of America is citizenship. And at the heart of citizenship, uh, the, the Declaration of Independence says the governments derive their power from the consent of the government. And so I don't consent to the murder of Ronald Green. No. I don't consent to the murder of Ahmaud Arbery. I don't no. consent to the murder of Steve Perkins no. or Sean Monterosa no. or any of the dozens of phone calls that we get a week. Absolutely. Where we are as a country, how we treat black and brown bodies is unacceptable and I do not consent. And when we, when we withdraw our consent from the government, they lose their power. Mm -hmm. they, don't have a, they don't have the right to enforce unjust laws that we don't consent to. And so I thank you all for standing with me and this family in our continued ongoing protest, our dissent. And uh, we can need to continue to make them feel it. That's what we'll do. That's right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Whose house? Our house. Whose house? Our house. Whose house? Our house. Ms. Mama and the family. Janelle, Jeff, Taylor. Um, I stand here on behalf of Attorney Bain Crump and Bain Crump Law. You know, it's not lost on us that we live in a society where there are two criminal legal systems. We don't say criminal justice because there is no justice for us in this system. Two tiers. And I went to law school for one purpose, and that was to work with Attorney Bain Crump. And God honored my sacrifice, so I take this duty very seriously wow. as we get up every day to fight for families like Ronald Green. And we're not happy with what went on in court today. We don't have a say in what happened, but we're not happy. And we're going to continue our fight in another court of law, which is the civil courts. And Attorney Ben Crump is very clear when it comes to raising the value of black life. And that is our fight, and we're going to continue to do it because we're not going to let Ronald Green's name go in vain. His death be in vain. I'm from Louisiana, so I know, I know exactly what happened here. So while we're going to move on from this 
courthouse today, we already know that we serve a God that sits yes. high as well. Vengeance is his. We're going to continue to pray and be steadfast and walk alongside this family. Attorney Crump couldn't be here today, but do know that he is plugged in. He is locked in with this family and every other family that continues to see injustice at the hands of the people that are supposed to serve and protect us. And so someone already mentioned it, but voting is important. I know a lot of people don't feel that way, but you've got to know that if we are not locked into what's going on in our local elections first, then we're missing the ball. That's right. Because by the time it gets to um, Vice President, soon to be President Kamala Harris, it's already too late. Yeah. It starts right here at home. Yes. So we can't become weary while doing good. That's right. right. Yes. We got to stay prayed up. Yes. Mad as hell because yes. we're mad. That's, That's right. right. Angry, right. And we're going to continue this fight. Yes. So thank y'all for having us. We will continue to fight with you. We love you. And just know, whoever, whoever decides to violate the rights of another black person in America, we're coming. That's right. Woo! We'll be right there. Yeah. No peace. No peace. No peace. No peace. No peace. No peace. All right, third good. Have my joint. The news today that starts today. It started when you were on those roads coming in and you made sure to pay attention to the speed limit. It started with all the Trump Take America Back signs that you had to pass. It started with the signs of do not comply out there on those roads, all leading into this courthouse. And like someone said before, the fight's a marathon. Because it started way before then. Yes, all the influences, they were there. All the roads, all the people, we walked in today, all the sheriffs had their guns out, you could see them. They all had something to say when people were, were going around the courthouse, going into the courthouse. The AC didn't work suddenly. On the back wall, everybody had their guns out too. They came out, told you it was going to be short. They owned only one case on today. Everybody did what they had to do when they got out, went to lunch. The fight continued. Justice continues, and the families here got great attorneys here in the fight. And we will fight. We'll have justice for Ronald Green. Right. Say his name. Ronald Green. Say his name. Ronald Green. Say his name. Ronald Green. 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 Thank you. When we fight, we, we win. win. 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 Black lives matter. matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Roots. Hey everybody, my name is Malina Abdullah and I organize with Black Lives Matter Grassroots. Grateful to have so many in the Black Lives Matter Grassroots family here. We are the formation that is 39 chapters on the ground, 43 formations all across the country. And we stand on front lines, not on red carpets. We're not the ones with a whole bunch of money, but we're the ones with a whole bunch of heart. Yeah. Um, and we are so grateful, Sister Malcolm. We're so grateful to the whole Green family for your fight. We're so grateful for all you've done to expose not just the five that started out, but also how the entire system doubles down on itself. The entire system was deliberately and intentionally created to produce these outcomes. And what that does is compel all of us to say we gotta upend this system. Yeah. We gotta upend this system. We can't be friends with the DA. I remember a few years ago when we were here thinking, oh, well maybe DA Belton will be all right. But no, he's a DA that works for a system. I don't care about black faces in high places. As Ruha Benjamin said, they will not save us. They will not save us. We will save us. I have a kafia on my neck because there's a genocide going on in Gaza. There are Palestinian children being killed, hundreds and thousands of them. But there's a genocide also happening right here. There's a genocide, which is the deliberate killing of a people, the deliberate and intentional killing of a people happening right here. 
this yeah. happening here in Louisiana and happening throughout the United States. And so the question becomes, dear students, are we going to seek to become a part of a system that is set up to put a target on your back, on your parents' backs, on your children's backs, on your siblings' backs? Are we going to say, black people have more power than we even know? Absolutely. And we've always had the power to free ourselves. We freed ourselves from chattel slavery. Yep. We freed ourselves and stopped the first wave of lynching. Civil rights happened because of us. Black power yes. is still happening because of us. And so when we fight, we do win. Yeah. Yes. We have to commit ourselves to the fight. Yeah. And we have to understand that I heard somebody say that sometimes they use God to silence us. Well, we as a people know that we use God to compel us to do righteous work. God is using us to do righteous work. And if we still ourselves for just a moment and feel the spirit of Ronald Green, and you can feel it oozing out of his family. Ronald is here. Ronnie is here. Ronnie is saying, you, I am your brother, and I will use you to do work that honors my memory. And so let's all allow ourselves to be used by our ancestors, by our people, by our siblings, by our future generations, by our creator to do righteous work. And if it's OK, Sister Mona, should we do um, Asada now, or you want to hold this? We got one more. Okay. Okay. So I just want to say again, thank you. Thank you. And your fight, it is so important, not just for Ronnie, but I'm the mother of three children. And so it's a fight that ensures that Amara, Amen, and Tandiwe live in a safer world. And so we're in it till the end. We roll until the wheels fall off and we will transform this world. Amen, Ashe. Who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. Who's got the power? We got the power. I'm Dr. Ashraf Ismail, the director for the Center for Racial Justice at Dillard University. I arrived here about 15 minutes ago with my students and heard the outcome of what went on in that building today and was thoroughly, thoroughly disgusted. Four years ago, the Board of Trustees at Dillard University felt like the university needed to get involved with racial injustice. We saw what happened with George Floyd for nine minutes watching the murder while people were just standing and watching, like it was nothing. I met Ms. Mona Hardin three years ago at ACLU meeting I held at Dillard University, and she had shared her story and just really kind of broke my heart. As I watched the video and saw what was going on, the evidence was clear. It was clear. These, these police officers deserved a life sentence. There was no doubt about it. We talk about a system. People come into my classroom last month and said the system, Dr. Dr. Ismail is not broken. It works exactly the way they want it. It works exactly the way they want it. That's frustrating to hear. As an Arab American, I've dealt with injustice. I've dealt with inequality. It continues to go on in this country and around the world. If you look at the Bible, you look at the Torah, the whole Quran, all man is created equal. We were born, and God has stated, we are to watch out for each other, support one another, and take care of each other. What went on today is completely injustice. The people that we put in office are not above the law. That's right. When I asked my students, I said, if you witnessed a murder, would you report it? No, Dr. Ismail. Why? I'm afraid of the, the system. I'm afraid of the system. The system needs to change. And we're in 2024, and I feel like we're in, we're in 19, 1920. We're still in 1920. When, are, when is this going to change? We put out these uh, George Floyd. Ronald Green. Glenn Foster. Charlie Alden. I remember Clint Foster. I remember getting up in the morning at my computer on a Sunday. And they said, uh, breaking news, Glenn Foster fell asleep in his car. And we just took it at his word. Took it at his word that this is how he passed away. 
Ronald Reed. What a cover up. It was a cover up. And yet we sit here today, we're getting probation? We're getting probation? It was like a near cover up. Why was it covered up? Because a murder went on. A murder was, was had here. And when people commit murder, what kind of sentence do they get? They get a life sentence. People are getting 13 years for a $300 credit card fraud and people committing murder and they're getting no probation. This is the consistency here. We're not going to stop fighting. We're going to keep moving. This is not the end today. We're going to keep moving. We're going to keep fighting.